Hi everyone, this is Richard. In this video, we're going to go over creating futures. So in previous videos, we talked about futures, how to use them, how to get the information out of them. Now let's talk about how to actually create a future, okay? So this seems pretty simple and straightforward, but just to be, make it clear, several ways of actually doing it. Number one was the await, uh, the async command, right? So let's just say I have a future string and the function is called completely. And I'm just going to say return I am a future. So what am I returning here? Is this a, a regular value, a string? What is it? This is not a future, right? This is a string. So how do I make this? Well, what I could do is just put async right above, and that automatically changes it into a future. Uh, You do have to spell correctly though, and it'll actually change it into a future itself. Now, why would I do this? Uh, I'm, not a good reason. I'm just saying that's how to automatically change, <clears throat> change it into a future. So if there was any question, you might have to have the async command inside of there. So what I would say is future, um, a future equals completely and I would say print await a future and that should work right inside here okay so using the await command remember in order to get the future string out of it okay so that's one way um, the other way actually is something called a completer. So future string completely, and you could have something like um, string name equals Richard. And then I would have a completer come just say call it C equals new completer. And what the completer is, is that it automatically converts whatever is here into a future. And the purpose of it is basically it tells, remember what the future does. It says, I'm going to get a value sometime in the future. It's the type for, for a callback, right? So, so I'm getting some information back into the future. Now what a completer does, it basically says the future is now complete. The information is here, but it's our way of activating that and turning it into a you're done type of situation, okay? So if I'm gonna return something inside of here, let's just say I'm gonna do a lot of information, a lot of calculating processing, then I say, okay, now I got what I need. All right, so um, what I could say is, C dot complete and the value right inside of here, the parameter, the argument, I think it's the argument, um, right inside of here, it would be name. And so the future has the value of name inside of here. And now I'll say return C dot future. I'll explain this in a second. Format it, print completely await future. This should have the same exact function. It should Richard right here. Okay. So what are we doing? This is future is the type of course we're going to have completely is going to be the function itself. String name equals Richard completer C is going to be the new completer. Okay. So we just need this object right inside here. Whatever value we give to the object is going to be in the C complete. So I want this. I want the return from this function to be a future somewhere. But how do I know that the function is going to be complete? Well, when it becomes complete, c.complete, and this is the final value you're going to return, okay? And then return c.future, c.future, it actually converts this thing into the future itself. And there's a couple of other things that we could do. Um, c complete error. So if there's a problem with completing the completing it is completed. So you can actually test it ahead of time if it actually has been complete. 
okay? But this is just a way of saying, you're done, go ahead and retrieve the value and then return it back up inside here. It will still be a future, right? So it won't be a string, actually. A couple of things to keep in mind. Um, number one, what if you're doing some stuff? Let's just say, uh, how about if I say, I'll, I'll keep that there. Let's say I'm gonna say a for int i equals zero, i is less than, and then i plus plus, and I'm gonna say if i equals this number c dot com I. Let's try that. Let's remove that. Remove that. So what we're going to say, here's the C that complete. I'm going to do a start counting up. If I hit 6,543, it's going to be complete. And then we're going to go eventually return the future. Um, if I'm going to do something like this, I might want to say break. So I might want to do that. So instead of it, just keep counting and counting and counting. I'll just go ahead and break it. Uh, yeah, if, if this is that, a return in the future should be 6,543. That didn't work. What happened? Could not start observatory... I'm not sure what that was. I It does it sometimes once in a while. Um, I'm not sure if something is complete, so you just have to hit run again. Um, 6,443. So this is the way of saying, okay, I'm in the middle of doing something right now. Oh, now I can complete the future. Now it's done, and now I can return the value. Of course, you don't have to break it, but then it's going to keep counting for who knows what reason. I don't know why you would do that, but that's just an option. Okay, a couple of other things. So that's what the completer function or the completer object, um, the class completer. Now let's go somewhere else. I'm going to talk about a class. Now, how is the behavior? Because this is what's important because this messed me up a few days ago. Let's do this. I'm going to say complete example C equals new complete example. And I'm going to say um, these are strings. I'll, I'll catch up in a second here. Okay, I'm going to create a class. Class right here, completer C equals new completer. Okay, we've done that already. And in the first method, right inside of here, you have C.complete right there, and then you return the C.future, okay? In the second method right here, you'll have c.complete the second completer and return c.future. Okay? So let's go ahead and try that. Complete example c.string first equals await, and then I'll say print first. So what should it be? It should be first completer, right? First completer. Run it again. First completer. Okay. Now, what happens if I do something else? What if I create, oh, no, activate the method second equals await c dot second? Okay, so what I'm going to do? Print the first one. I'm using the await. Remember. We just did that in a few videos ago to take out the future part of it itself. Take out the future. I should have done this, actually. Sorry, I'm being a little lazy. Um, same thing, format. Okay, so same thing. Let's do that. Activate it, and I'm getting an error here. What's the error? future already completed. So if we look back at the code, we create the object C, 
right here. Now, in the first one, you create the object C right here itself. This is confusing because this C is not the same thing as that C. So let me change the name of it just for, for teaching purposes. So um, uh, let's just call it example. We'll change it completely altogether. Okay, so this C is created an object, and then you're going to complete it right here, right? So you created the object for this complete example, and then you're activating the method. So this object C is completed here. Then you're trying to activate the method here, the second, over here, but it's already been completed itself. Future already completed. If it's already completed, you can only create it and complete it once. Okay? So you have a future, you complete it once, you're done. Because we're talking about this particular object. So how do you solve this problem? Well, you have to create two different objects because they're 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 the you want them to be separate things. This is going to be the future for which is a completely different object for first than it is for second, right? It's a different object altogether. That is how you do it. You don't want the same object because you can only complete it once and then you don't have a second value here. So you we have to keep that in mind. So if you did it this way, it'll be first completer and then second completer. And that's how you work it, okay? So I hope that was clear how to create a future if you need to in the future, several different ways. Um, a lot of people do do this completer in and of itself, so it's kind of one of those things that when I read it, I'm like, what the, what, what is that, what's going on with that? So I hope that was helpful for you. Thanks a lot.